But since it went live in August of 2023, we have even been impressed internally by its accuracy. For example, Wall Street bet that a large national wholesaler would report positive sales growth in the second quarter of 2023. Not only did Ernest AI correctly predict a contradictory negative year-on-year -year sales print, but came within one one hundredth of the actual result. Hello and welcome to Signals by AlphaSense, where we hear thoughtful insights from business leaders, investors, and experts. Hello and welcome. You listen to Signals by AlphaSense, and I'm your host, Nick Mazing. Today we have a returning guest, Michael Malouf, from Ernest Analytics, a leading alternative data company. When we spoke very early this year, we covered the corporate use case for alternative data, but a lot has happened in the world since then with AI. So this episode will focus specifically on AI applications in alternative data. Ernest just released a new product. We'll have the links in the show notes. So Michael, welcome back. And can you tell us a bit more about you and about Ernest? Yeah, thanks for having me, Nick. It's great to be back on the show. I'm the head of marketing at Ernest Analytics. At Ernest, we go find data sets that companies generate as part of their business. We call that data exhaust and turn them into highly predictive measures of the consumer economy. That includes tens of millions of anonymous U.S. consumers, actual credit card spending, itemized consumer packaged goods sales, online product pricing, foot traffic using mobile locations, and healthcare treatment through insurance claims data. I wasn't in the data business originally. I actually started my career as an equity analyst at Goldman Sachs, covering tech and telecom. That's where I really gained an appreciation of the role that data plays in decision making. You hear the phrase garbage in, garbage out. I think I said that on our last episode too, all the time. But it really was difficult in those days to discern accurate signals from the very noisy data that we had. And what originally drew me to Ernest was the founder, Kevin Carson, and his approach to data. He essentially believed that the noisy data that investors were using back in the early 20 teens would be more predictive and hence more commercial if it were paired with analysts who understood the business models of the companies that the data covered. So almost seven years ago, I joined Ernest when it was just about 20 folks in a pretty cramped office in the Flatiron, and it's been a great run. Data is an interesting space because very few people at the time and, and still today had all the skills necessary off the bat to succeed. I had the business understanding, but not the understanding of how our products were made or how we actually read that data. So early on, I learned how to pull reports and SQL, I managed AWS, I built Tableau books. Now I'm our chief storyteller. I go into the data daily to look for interesting stories that apply to investors, companies, and consultants. What I love most about the role and the space are the interesting thought leaders I get to meet, like you, Nick. Uh, in an average week, I may sit down with a professor of marketing, a portfolio manager, a blogger, a CMO. I'm based here in New York City, and I love that confluence of tech, finance, and corporate leadership here. So when we spoke earlier this year, we covered the what I would call emerging corporate use case for alternative data, things like which promotions are working in real time and things like true market share and so on. But the market for alternative data, like you said, originally the market that is served by alternative data originally is investors, specifically the most sophisticated, you know, long short hedge funds. So can you walk us through the types of alternative data that is used by investors? Yeah, that's right. We use the term gold standard at Ernest to apply to our consumer data set, specifically our two separate transaction data sets. Because that's really what they are. No data set on the market has proven more predictive for a wider range of names than anonymized credit card transaction data. We originally built our solution suite around consumer facing brands, not B2B or professional services, because that's where the best data was. Now to your point, of course, that data has missing pieces. So we talk about investors that includes both private and public equity investors, by the way building a data mosaic. After getting a baseline of company performance using transaction data, maybe the investor also uses foot traffic from mobile location to see how an individual store is faring or product level sales by CPG brand to see if consumers are trading down to cheaper products. Maybe the investor also uses online product pricing to see if there is margin pressure on the business or they're discontinuing 
discounting heavily. Investors build a case for an investment over time through this data mosaic, which they can easily do with lots of information, but not easily with publicly available information or even data obtained while doing the due diligence from the companies themselves. So whether they're building a position in a public stock, taking a company private, investors are ultimately looking for the same thing. That's confidence. They want to eliminate surprises in their investment process. With Ernest, they have more data set options than ever to build that data mosaic, all the ones I just mentioned, and ultimately build confidence in their investment decision. We're up to about nine highly predictive data sets so far in counting. And now let's talk about AI. I mean, here at AlphaSense, we already released our first generative AI product earlier this year, earning smart summaries on, on transcripts. And I don't think it's an over-exaggeration to say that everyone, quote unquote, knows that AI applications are going to be very widely adopted. So can you tell us more about how you're now using AI in the context of alternative data at earnest for things like revenue forecasts? Sure. Of all the tech buzzwords we've lived through in the last decade, you and I, I think AI is the one with the most staying power. Given its potential to scale existing processes and unlock the value hidden within our massive data sets, Ernest has been using some version of machine learning, the basis for AI, for years to ensure the quality of our data. There would simply not have been a scalable way for analysts to comb through the billions of rows that we get and create reliable signals. Machine learning helped us quiet the noise, if you will. Then in August, we launched Earnest AI, which built on our machine learning foundation. Earnest AI represents the next step in using generative artificial intelligence to actually derive signals from the data. The generative tool can predict reported metrics for hundreds of US companies, nearly doubling our coverage in the single day that it was launched. Previously, it would have taken analysts days, if not weeks, to deliver predictive modeling for a ticker. Now analysts can spend more time covering companies and less time launching them. So it was a huge development for us. So how did you build a model? Like, how does it work? How is it used? <laughs> That's a great question. So I can't get into too much detail. It is proprietary. But at a high level, reported metric predictions from Earnest AI does two things. First, it improves the historic data using publicly available sources of truth to make sure that the data's sample is as accurate a reflection of reality as possible. Second, it looks at historical relationships across the company's reported metrics. So think reported US sales or same store sales in our data to predict how the future quarter's earnings will print. We can now predict earnings with a lot greater accuracy and much earlier in the quarter, thanks to Ernest AI. So that allows investors to act faster and, and with more confidence. Mm -hmm. Do you have any good examples of your forecast for whether it's for you know a, a metric like revenue or a KPI has been more accurate than the Wall Street estimates for that specific KPI? Yeah, quite a few examples actually. Earnest AI's reported metrics predictions were trained on years of examples on hundreds of tickers. So we were fairly confident in its ability to generate accurate results at launch. But since it went live in August of 2023, we have even been impressed internally by its accuracy. For example, Wall Street bet that a large national wholesaler would report positive sales growth in the second quarter of 2023. Not only did Ernest AI correctly predict a contradictory negative year-on-year -year sales print, but came within one one-hundredths of the actual result. If an investor had been using the Ernest AI read, they would have seen the subsequent negative stock reaction coming. And there are more examples of Ernest AI not just correctly predicting the directionality of an earnings surprise, but also generating predictions that came very close to the actual results. The basic reason is that Ernest AI is able to build that data mosaic for these stocks faster and with more accuracy than Wall Street. Mm -hmm. it, we're obviously very early in AI adoption and I mean, everybody has started using some applications every day, whether it's the consumer tools or in our cases, the specialized tools, but certainly there is a long ways to go. So how do you see AI playing a role in alternative data with Ernest in the future? Right. So Ernest AI launched with just a single feature, reported metric predictions based on our Vila transaction data. 
It's one of our two transaction data sets. Ernest AI is already available in our direct feed in delivered tables. Next, it's coming to Dash, which is our proprietary online platform. But this is really just the beginning. In the future, you can expect Ernest AI to power predictive metrics across data sets to create composite earnings. This tool will also eventually underpin other metrics for non-public names. So a lot of applications. If you take a step back, it makes sense for the whole data industry to embrace AI as part of our process. You know, data platforms like Ernest, we're onboarding billions of rows of data a day. There's simply no way we can keep up as an industry using analysts alone to derive signals from exponentially growing data sets. Ultimately, those signals are what our clients are paying for. So Ernest AI is moving us into a new chapter as a company where our product is no longer just high quality data on the consumer economy that our clients interpret on their own, but rather our predictions themselves. I invite folks to read the press release and sign up for Ernest Dash tool to see for themselves and take a tour. Yeah, I've, I've, I played with the Dash when we first spoke and I should go try it again. Michael, uh, thank you for joining us today. Yeah, thanks so much for having me back, Nick. Uh, pleasure as always. Today we spoke with Michael Malouf from Ernest Analytics about the intersection of AI and alternative data. We're going to have all the links in the show notes. This was another episode of Signals by AlphaSense. My name is Nick Mazing. Thank you for watching or listening. Thank you for joining us. This was another episode of Signals by AlphaSense. Keep in mind that all views presented here are the views of the guests and hosts and do not represent the views of their employers or of AlphaSense. Nothing in this podcast constitutes investing, tax, legal, or medical advice. If you enjoyed this episode, leave us a rating and review and subscribe for more.